In this demonstration lesson, we're going to look at some network enumerators, fuzzers, HTTP interceptors, visualization tools, and talk about log reduction and analysis tools, specifically syslog reduction. And then we're going to look at a pretty fascinating security assessment, and that is launching a phishing campaign within your own organization to train users not to respond to phishing emails. So it's a really good security assessment tool. As a matter of fact, my company that I work for, we just went through that and they tried to trick their employees with an internal phishing campaign. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Metasploit. To explain these other tools, we're gonna to go on a web safari. Make sure that you bookmark these websites for your own purposes. And we'll start with network enumerators. The best way to know what a network enumerator is, is to look at some of the most popular tools up there and then compare their features. So I'm at Secure Wizardry, and you can see we've got a Recon NG network enumerator. And this just basically tells you what it is. It's discovering hosts and devices on your network. They're partial to overt discovery protocols like ICMP and SNMP. And these also fall into the category of vulnerability scanners, network mapping tools like Nessus, for example. And of course, you want to categorize these as wireless enumerators and wired enumerators. So down here, we see uh, several, uh, LAN Helper, a Unicorn Scan, HPing2. One of the most popular is Angry IP Scanner or IP scan, it's open source, it's cross-platform, it's fast and simple to use, scans IP addresses and ports, and then of course it can visualize that for you. So network enumerators are assessment tools that are part of your early risk analysis, risk assessment. They're used in penetration testing, vulnerability analysis, compliance scanning. Other tools you might use are fuzzer tools. So here is Black Arch Linux penetration testing distribution, like Kali. This is also a popular distribution for pen testing. So instead of Kali, which I've talked about quite a bit, let's talk about Black Arch. And we're in the fuzzer category. So this shows different tools, fuzzer tools in the Black Arch distribution. And they define this as throwing random inputs at the subject to see what happens. And you know what? That's pretty much what fuzzing is but you can see that they break down these different fuzzing components or modules into command line tools, closed loop for C programs, a simple TCP UDP protocol fuzzer. Here's a Python based fuzzing framework. Easy fuzzer is a flexible fuzzing tool that has a CSV output. FTP fuzz, the, the master of all master fuzzing scripts targeted towards FTP servers. So just a whole wide variety of these and they're in alphabetical order. A lot of these are written in Python. Some of these can do brute force attacks against a wide variety of database servers like Hexerbase. So uh, check out this website, add this to your knowledge base so that you understand the different capabilities of these fuzzer tools and what we use them for. CompT, I want you to know what an HTTP interceptor is. And really this is for a web programmer. It's something that's more understandable. If you're not really a developer or a programmer, it might be a difficult concept to get your hands around, but basically the most popular interceptor is AngularJS, and I'm at their website right now. By the way, you can go to Angular.io to get their most recent products, okay? AngularJS has an HTTP service, and they use it to communicate with database backends and make HTTP requests. So they can capture requests, they can manipulate them. So it's a pre-processor and a post-processor tool. It's really a script or a number of scripts, okay? That can be used for global HTTP error handling as well as looking for vulnerabilities. So if I go down here to, you can see there's an interceptors link. I'll just scroll down. And it says, you know, before you start creating interceptors, make sure you understand this appy, okay? But it tells you what the purposes of interceptors are global error handling, authentication, synchronous or asynchronous pre-processing or post-processing of HTTP responses. And it's basically a service factory, okay, that's registered with the HTTP provider function, adding them to this particular array. This lesson also refers to security visualization. So this is a great site I want you to check out. It's called secviz.org. And if we go down here, and this is a, a site by Anisha Sethi. It's really cool. If you go down here, it kind of gives you an idea. We've visualizing big data, pulling information from Hadoop, 
or running Hive over Hadoop. But we go down here. This is going to give you, you know, if you look at the syllabus that this person has created for their for their visualization course, this actually lays out better than I could do this on a slide the different types of aspects of security visualization. You know, data analysis, data log processing, log management and seam, big data with Hadoop, Spark, Elasticsearch, Hive and Impala, and then data science and data hunting with R, the R programming language. Also different visualization concepts, visualization theories. And you can see some of the results over here with tools like Mondrian, Gephi, Afterglow, and Graffiti. And then just some use cases for visualizing security, visualizing perimeter threats, the network flow analysis, uh, firewall visualization, visualizing your IPS signature analysis, vulnerability scans, proxy activities, user activities, and host-based data analysis. And at the very bottom, just a sample of some tools and techniques. We also want to talk about reducing the amount of noise, which is reducing our logs. And we have various logs, system logs from syslog. We also have logs created by all of our application servers, like email servers and web servers, logs created by firewalls and intrusion prevention systems. Here's an example how in a Palo Alto networks environment, you can have a PAN M500 log collector. So you have these local administrators that are on their next generation Palo Alto firewalls, and they're going to send either individually from themselves to this log collector, which can then do aggregation, correlation, filtering, a wide variety of different filters and policies, and then send that to the main administration, the main management station, that's also running the Palo Alto Panorama graphical interface, where they can consolidate the firewall logs. You have the application command center, what's called the app scope to get content identification to all the applications that are running and the reporting tools. Now you can also place these individuals into a collector group. And from a collector group, you can send the logs to the Pan M500. Now I realize that this is just gonna take the system logs and other types of logs, not the reports. Okay, the reports will come directly from these firewalls, bypass the log collector, and the reports will go up to the main panorama management. Okay, it's very important that when you are collecting log information and analyzing that, that you have tools in place for reducing the amount of noise and filtering out unnecessary logs. For example, if you're sending NetFlow information, from one of these devices, let's say NetFlow version nine, you also have the capability within the NetFlow collector to say, I'm not gonna send any of the redundant system log information. If I have a system log entry for the NetFlow information, I'm just not gonna send that syslog information and just send NetFlow. So it's important that you really reduce the overhead, especially early on in the process when you're designing your log strategy. Now, if I'm on a firewall, let's say like a Cisco Adaptive Security Appliance, I've got some foundational syslog capabilities that I can do there. For example, here I'm on the ASDM, the ASA Device Manager. And you can see over here on the left-hand side is our logging area. So in the logging setup, I'm going to enable logging. I can also, you know, reduce the overhead by not sending debug messages syslogs. If I check off that box, to send debug messages to syslogs, I'm going to obviously add more noise. I can also modify the buffer size, for example, or I can save the buffer to an FTP server, or I can save it to the flash memory on this particular appliance. Something else you can do is you can choose your filters. So I can choose whether it's an SNMP trap destination or, or email, I can choose which level. I'm going to send and those eight levels. So if I send everything informational to the ASDM and to my internal buffer, it's going to send everything from the informational level, which is level six, all the way down to level zero. Okay. And you can also see for sending to the email or to the console or to my SSH sessions, I can actually send certain levels. You also see up here event classes. So I can filter out certain events and certain syslog message types as well. I can even rate limit 
my syslog information. And these are key things to do to optimize your logging and reporting. So for example, I'm creating a logging filter here. You can see there's my eight levels, debugging, which is level seven, emergencies level zero. And you can see I can choose to filter at a severity level, which means, for example, if I do notifications, it's going to be everything from that level five all the way down to zero. But you can also create event lists, which are going to have event classes in them. So you can see down there, there's event class auth. So I have an authentication event class, which I could choose to filter out, or I could choose to include in an event list. So not only could I say to the email of my administrator, I only want to send level five notifications, but I can say I only want to see level five notifications and just authentication information, okay, if I wanted to get that granular. So, so far we've seen a variety of additional security assessment tools. Let's take a look at a demo now of creating a campaign to assess the security of my end users and their willingness to fall victim to a phishing attack. Okay, at this demo, I want to show you how easy it is to create a phishing or a spear phishing campaign using Metasploit Pro. I'm going to RDP over to my Windows 7, and I'm going to go ahead and run Metasploit GUI. We're going to go to one of the quick start wizards and choose phishing campaign. I'm going to call this project LinkedIn. I can choose my address range. Click on next. I'm going to name this campaign LinkedIn and I'm not going to do a custom campaign. I'm going to do a phishing campaign. Now, as I scroll down here, notice that we have, you know, different components. So the first thing I'm going to do is create my email component. And so the big picture here is this. I'm not actually going to create a spear phishing campaign in order to deliver malware or use an exploit kit. I'm creating this campaign for my own organization to help train users. So I may even call this, you know, something like awareness. This isn't actually an attack campaign. It's an awareness campaign. By the way, this little icon up here is just my dash lane password manager. That's why you see that little icon there. This is not part of Metasploit. So I want to help train my users. So I'm going to really kind of trick them into following through on this phishing for the purposes of security awareness and training. So click on email. So I'm going to say in my email to them, I'm going to say urgent, and I'm going to copy and paste something in here. Please create a corporate LinkedIn profile. And we'll say this is going to be from marketing at yourcompany.com. And we'll say the marketing team. I'm going to be very careful not to misspell anything because obviously misspelled words is a telltale sign of a phishing attack. I also want to choose a target list. And I don't have a target list, so I could create one. We'll just say this is uh, my list. I could browse and get one from a CSV file, but let's just say it's going to be Michael. You know, I'd be creating this list, obviously. Michael at yourcompanyname.com. There I am. Okay, so we'll, you know, create this list. You can manually add them, or obviously, you'd rather go ahead and do this in a, a CSV format and just import it. So click on Next. Got my email header configured. Now you've got a couple of tokens or variables here, first name, and you've got this email was intended for first name, last name. I'm going to change this information here. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to paste in here what I really want to say. You are highly encouraged to create a LinkedIn profile to promote our company. To use a special link that will direct you to the LinkedIn as a corporate employee, click here. Thank you, the marketing team. Okay, looks good. Could I put in custom attributes? These are attributes, first name and uh, last name. Sure, I could insert some custom attributes there as well to fill this in and make it more elaborate. You know, the more elaborate, the better. If this is an actual spear phishing campaign, then you would, of course, make this very directed towards, let's say, part of the C-team, CTO, CFO, CAO, those kind of people. And, of course, obviously, you know, you got all kind of capabilities here for formatting, but I can preview that and for John Doe, okay? Click on save. So now I have my email. I need to create a landing page. This is what I want them to go to that's going to actually be 
the spoofed web page. So I'm going to go landing page, aware, and I'm going to use a campaign redirect page, and I want to transmit and save user provided data. Absolutely. Now, again, you could redirect them to your own web server and your own URL, okay? But I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to clone a website. Remember, this is, uh, I'm trying to get them to go to LinkedIn, right? So I'm going to clone LinkedIn. And you could do this with Facebook. You could do this with, you know, if you're doing some kind of watering hole campaign where you're looking for a lot of people who go to the same type of communities or they're part of the part of societies or groups like, you know, ISC squared, uh, you could also, as part of a watering hole campaign, clone some kind of website like a conference or a summit coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and clone LinkedIn.com. I can preview it, but it's not going to look perfect because uh, JavaScript's disabled during the previews. But you can see, you know, there's LinkedIn and I'm trying to get them to give me this information, right? So in this campaign, when they click here in the email message, it will take them to a page that looks just like LinkedIn. So that's the landing page, but I'm going to redirect them once they input the information. I'm going to redirect them to this page and let's, let's preview what they're going to see. So this will be warning your machine could have been hacked. What just happened? Okay. You've been tricked in a phishing attack. Why should you care? What's safe? What's not safe? So this is from Rapid7, the developers of Metasploit, and it gives you some good telltale signs that we already know about. Bad spelling and grammar, deceptive links, you know, move your mouse over the top there, sense of urgency, no name in the email, okay? If you receive any fishy emails, forward them to your IT department, okay? And then why are we doing this? Well, it's your IT team. So we click on save. So I've now got my phishing campaign and you can see how easy this would be for somebody who's malicious or nefarious to come in and create this right here in Metasploit. And there's, you know, dozens of other kits that will do this just as well. And by the way, they could have their own email and their own web server set up in the dark web or the deep web somewhere. And you could be being redirected to those sites where you're going to get, you know, ransomware, remote access Trojans, be part of a botnet, the list goes on and on. So I can save my campaign. And if I want to come back to it later, I can edit it and I can launch the campaign. I hope you enjoyed this demo of creating a phishing campaign in Metasploit Pro.